So without further ado, what I had picked up from PetSmart just now is a Fluo 307 canister filter. It's rated up to uh, 300 US gallons per hour of flow rate, 40 to 70 US gallons tank size. It's smaller than what I uh, used to have, which is the MagnaFlow, uh, Marineland MagnaFlow 310. Just give you an idea here. I'll put them side by side. This is the marine lane without the power head. So with the power head mounted, it'll be over the top. It's definitely will be taller than the 307. I think uh, the marine lane MagnaFlow 360 is rated uh, up to 360 gallons of flow per hour, up to 100 gallon tank size. And the power consumption on it is 35 watts, whereas the Fluvo 307 is only uh, only takes 25 uh, 25 watts to operate. So I would expect the flow to be not as strong as the Marineland. However, it's going to save me energy over in the long run. And for the, this 40 gallon tank over here, it should be plenty enough as this d filter is designed for 40 gallons up to 70 gallons. Although considering that African cichlids usually require higher buyer load, of course they eat a lot and then poop a lot. And usually people overstock them. However, for this uh, grooming tank, I only keep a maximum of, of six feet, six fish, as you can see. So I expect them to do it quite all right. This uh, two and a half, three inch fish over here is one of the offsprings of the red ruby. He's becoming redder and redder for me. There's a couple of red rubies in here. This one's always in hiding. He probably doesn't like the fact that I got all these bio media in here. Here's another one in hiding. So, as soon as I have this new Fluvo 307 set up, things will be uh, much better. Now, do a 50% water change as well. This tank has been set up for three weeks to, to a month and hasn't had a water change. Simply because of the fact that uh, the marine land filter went kapoop. And then ever since I've just been using the, uh, the two sponge filters to filter this tank. The sponge filter over here is rated for a 40 gallon size. And there's another one back there that's ready, ready, ready for 40 gallons. So at least they're they're keeping healthy. And of course, I got all these bio medias in inside, and that'll have a positive effect on the water as well as uh, for when I switch out the canister filter. I wouldn't even have to open up any medias that come with this filter. I'll just simply putting uh, as much bio filter media, uh, the old filter media from from here into it, and it'll be up and running instantly. So I'll give you an update once I have it all set up and running. Stay tuned. So I got a really good deal on this uh, 307, full 307 filter, and I got the receipt right here. As you can see, Hopefully you can see that. It was regularly $189.99 with a $50 discount in store. Discount, it was on sale in the store on the shelf. And then I got another 25% off coupon on top of it from the, uh, the game that's in the app. For those of you that don't know about the game, go ahead and download the PetSmart app and then it's it's not called a pet tree, uh, it's just a game, you'll see it inside the app, so. Okay, here's the Fluvo unboxing, hopefully you can hear me. 
I'll try and speak louder. All right. Nice packaging, no doubt. Here we have the tubing. Compared to the Marineland uh, Magnum Float 360 filter, uh, it's much thinner in diameter. A lower flow rate obviously so I'd have to figure out what's the length of tubing that I need and I'll have to cut it cut them the appropriate size approximately uh, half and half but I won't cut it now until I get it over to the tank to have a, a more accurate uh, measurement this package over here you can see that they got the uh, o-ring that goes around the power head all the tubings and here's your shutoff valve. Uh, I see that the shutoff valve is all in one unit. Uh, I will uh, get it open up and set it up. See what else it comes with? Paid by them, so straight out of the pocket. I hope I, I wish I was paid by them. The last three years, I'll be happy with it. User manual covers the 107, 207, 307, and the 407. Looks like height, uh, height wise, wise, the 307. It's the same height as the 207, it's just a little wider this way, and uses more energy. I don't get how they're able to produce more flow rate with the same, uh, while drawing the same amount of power though, because while reading the specs of the 107 versus the 207, they both use about uh, 10 or 15 watts worth of energy, I forgot. However, oh, maybe the impeller, the, um, the blades on the impeller is of a, a different size, even though the, amount, the power source is the same. That's that. Okay, let's open this up. Plastic doesn't look the cleanest. I mean, it doesn't look like it's used. So. Here's your input and output ports. In on the left hand side, out on the right hand side, and here's your purging. Device for jaw air. Other friends use buttons. This one uses some kind of lever. Nice and clean. Let me put some uh, silicone grease on it before I put it in for a smoother operation. So hang tight. I mean, I enjoy my canister filters. Usually, I don't really maintain them. Like a few months at a time. I've had some canisters that have gone almost a year without me having to open it up, clean the media and whatnot. So that should do. Three 
07. Draws 16 watts of energy at uh, 0.2 amps. This is very power efficient, saves electricity. Here's your um, mechanical filter pads. So what I'll do is I'll take my existing mechanical media and I will probably squeeze them right from the input, filter input. So all the uh, so all the detritus and the beneficial bacteria will be seeding seated on the new um, foam media this way the new filter can be up and running running instantaneously so on the other half is another chamber so far I like the design actually two bags of phosphate media Phosphate foam and two bags of uh, carbon. I usually chug out the carbon, but I'll save these ones to remove uh, any medication in the future. Oh, that's nice and easy. Bags of uh, ceramic media. I won't be opening up. I'll be using my existing ones that's already seeded with uh, beneficial bacteria. Fine filter mesh. Polish the water. Usually, in terms of filter foams, you want it water to travel through the most. Uh, purest foam first before hitting the uh, the denser foams. So judging from the way the order of these things laid, laid out, you got the porous films down here, so what I, I'd expect water to flow up from the bottom first. It'll hit the, por the porous film go, and then they'll go through the fine filter mat same as on this side go through from the black one to the fine filter mat we'll trap all the larger detritus and larger poop you know dirt particles before um, before it hits your mechanical uh, before it hits your biological media so I had to expect the biological uh, ceramic ring media to sit above it so that the water goes from the bottom upwards, clean water will then hit the, um, the bio media. And usually they come with a lot of uh, dust particles, you know, loose, loose particles. Be sure that the ring goes out, otherwise It'll make its way into the motor and then you get all kinds of chatter noise and it uh, actually damages your 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 blades um, your impeller blades not that I have ever done it but I always make it a good practice to do that before it has a chance to destroy my motor the direction uh, the water flows it'll come down From the input side, as you can see, the input hole is, is on the right hand, uh, left hand side. It'll be diverted leftwards. It'll go through the mechanical media first on, on the left half of the chamber. So basically, water is going to enter through the left hand side, going through 
the blue filter foam with a lot of surface area, the way it's designed with the bumpiness is to enable or increase the, uh, the overall surface area. It'll go through and you can see the opening down the bottom, water will make its way to the other side. It'll come up through this film on this side and the rest of the water will travel through the right hand chamber as you can see. And I'll pull it out. Open up the top lid over here. It's got a very convenient lifting handle. So water will travel from the bottom up. Bottom of these trays are open, so water will travel up. Let me just go through each layer, uh, each tray one by one. So here's the bottom tray. We have some medium porosity film. Again, with those uh, moguls, whatever you call it, the bumpiness to increase the surface area. And then it'll go through the fine filter media, polish up the water. And then it travels up through the second layer. You could put in whatever bio media you want. You can customize it however you want. And then it goes through the top layer again. You can put in more bio media, mechanical media, what have you. I will put basically two trays worth of bio media. And then finally, put another layer of uh, pads like this that comes with the filter. It's called phosphate. Basically, it sits at uh, the very top. With it sitting on the very top, you still have about an inch and a half worth of uh, room to put your biomedia into. I would, I would put like an extra layer or filter boss or something on top of it to polish the water before it exits the canister filter and, and uh, enter the tank the tank to keep the water extra extra clean. So far I like the design. I'll show you uh, how it's running when it's up and running. Stay tuned. Here's some of my old media on view. And I just initially set it up, put it down here, cut the tube into length. Priming was relatively easy. I just had to pull this priming lever three to five times and the water started filling up the canister filter. And look at this guys. The water flow is so freaking strong. It is so strong. I mean, the water level is a little low, so I still have to fill it up to the top, but I suspect that initially I might have to turn down the water flow. And I'm quite impressed. I mean, I know that as uh, uh, these filter foams are totally new, they're completely free, not unclogged, so the water is going to be at, the, at its maximum. The water flow is going to be at its maximum. But over time, the flow is going to get reduced. I understand that, but even still, this is really impressive. Just shoot it all, all the way to the center of the tank. The water movement carries to the other side of the tank, too. If it wasn't for these crates restricting it, it's going to the other side of the glass, I'm sure. I still have to uh, put the lid back up, but the angle is easily adjustable.
Um, you cannot raise it up and down so much. However, you can only adjust the length of the tubing to uh, let it sit up higher. Or if you want water output to be lower, then you have to leave longer tubing down here. So you have to feed slightly more tubing through to make the nozzle come out lower. So let's try the water flow reduction function over here. Right now it's at its maximum, so that's totally shut off. I'm slowly increasing it. That's about quarter to 30% of the way. And now it's about 50%. I suspect that this kind of flow would be best for planted, planted tanks where they don't need too much flow. And I could reduce it to like quarter percent. Let's go to 50%. And there's about 50% flow. Quite impressive. That's, that looks like it's about how much flow is coming out of my now broken Magnaflow 360, even though the tank size of the Magnaflow 360 is like almost 25% larger. And the impeller, the broken impeller, which I could not get the part on, and I get the part from is uh, even bigger compared to the 307, Louisville 307. But the fact that it's able to put out so much output is quite impressive. I suspect that some of it might have to do with the thinner tubing. I mean, the thinner, tu thinner area obviously will uh, increase the flow per, per unit area. That's just physics giving the same amount of power, pump power. But what is impressive is that this filter only draws 16 watt, whereas this filter draws something like 35 watt. So this is definitely a more advanced filter. And a more energy efficient, for sure. Look at that. It's just, Blowing like crazy at 100%.